I think we, we just briefly had a, a quick conversation about how in general the thinking about inclusivity and diversity of representation is what is important. And we were looking at this, that that's why it's important that female um, um, characters are represented in the same way that uh, in a more nuanced way on screen. And this is something that um, I think a lot of female uh, directors that perhaps I, I can see in your wonderful lineup are, um, um, have been working hard in the past 30, 40 years to make it happen, to kind of bring the diverse look um, into Iranian cinema. So I think it functions differently. So I think um, with, for Iranian filmmakers making films in Iran, it is absolutely necessary, it's legal, and it, they have to abide by these laws. So there's no choice in the matter. Um, I think that said, the way in which they explore veiling is very complex and very interesting, and they've kind of, they've kind of um, shaken up this idea of the binary quite well. And you see that, I think, very vividly in Rachel Bani Etemad's character, Tuba, who in the first kind of in Under the Skin of the City, who's kind of forced to cover the, the, her hair poking out and kind of Bani Etemad alludes to this petty politics of forced veiling, where she's trying to verbalize her serious concerns uh, for workers' rights. And she's kind of... Um, muffled, she's not articulate, but by the end of the film, the camera's facing her again, and she's kind of much more eloquent, much louder, much more confident, and her hair pokes out. But I'm also fascinated with an Iranian cinema looking at, for example, what's become a classical text to teach and talk about um, Shirin Neshat's women without men, you know, that we, we get to see the ins and outs of a woman, for example, in a, in a public bath. Uh, where she's, you know, plays a prostitute and she's trying to, she's naked and, well, almost naked and trying to clean herself by almost peeling her skin off to the point where it bleeds, you know, again, the body and the uncovering of it and the reality of what goes through is really neatly depicted and really, I think, thought through in um, ideologically complex ways. Uh, compared to, for example, cinemas from other parts of the world. But I've always been, I think what fascinated me most about Van Yetama's body of work and the way in which she talks about her body of work is her insistence, insistence in staying in Iran and not going outside of Iran and producing the films that she produces within the context of censorship, within the context of politics and social and cultural kind of um, different circumstances. I think she feeds from that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I cannot exactly remember what she said in that interview, but something, um, I, I don't know if Sarah, you can remember that, but, uh, but she's, you know, she's not going out. And the concept of feminism itself, and Zahra and I are my experts on this, so who am I to talk here? But the concept of feminism, as we understand it from a Western perspective, just like what Zahra was saying in terms of feminist film theory, it doesn't necessarily translate to the context of Iran as we understand it within a Western context. We need new words, we need different approaches. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these two scholars that I'm honored to be with, in the, well, three scholars rather, all three of you in the same virtual room with, you guys are the ones who are coming up with those kind of concepts and theoretical approaches that we desperately need for any cinema, let alone Iranian cinema.